would say so. All right. This is a good group here. Um, thanks everyone for showing up. We normally try to do this in person, but um, things have changed. So uh, hopefully by the time we get to, uh, uh, you know, at the end of the study, when we can all get together and talk about, you know, updating the, the plan, um, we can do that in person, hopefully. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, so tonight is um, what we're calling Meet Your Scientist. And um, we, uh, we're here to just kind of tell you about this project that's going on um, in the county. It's a countywide, uh, uh, countywide project uh, doing lake studies on basically all the lakes in the county that have uh, uh, public access and helping, helping them uh, create a, a lake management plan. Um, now you guys are a little more sophisticated than most of the groups we've worked with because you guys have, have been through this. I don't know how many of you were involved in Ontario's thing a few years ago, but you guys have, um, I was reading it today, a, a, a very good lake management plan. Um, Ontario is a great company. I know those guys and they do, a, they do a fine job. So it makes my job a little easier. So, um, you know, so for most of these lakes we're working with, this is kind of step one, base one. They've never done anything like this before. For you, this is really just going to be about updating your plan. So um, a lot of the same, uh, those same studies that you did, the aquatic plant surveys, the, the water quality sampling, the, the everything, um, we're just going to kind of be going through all that again. And, and uh, we're not going to, like I say, we're not going to reinvent the wheel, um, but we'll, we'll update your plan with uh, what we know now. And, um, and uh, you know, uh, adjust our, our, our objectives and stuff if, if necessary or, or as needed. So um, that's basically it. So I won't get too far into that because I'm going to talk more about that in a second. But um, I want to um, let uh, Ken and Dale talk a little bit here uh, from the county about um, how this project got started and how we're, uh, how we're um, putting you guys to work here. <laughs> All right. Um my name is Ken Delata. For those that don't know me, I'm the county conservationist uh, for O'Connell County. Um, I'm going to let Dale explain a little bit on how we got going on this, but the one a couple things I wanted to talk to you guys about. First off, we'll talk about the actual Zoom. Um, you guys want to be able to talk or make any noise. If you go down in the bottom left corner of your screen, you will see a microphone there. Uh, you can mute that. That way, if something happens in your household that isn't interrupting the meeting or whatever. So. Um, once we get through the three of us kind of talking, uh, Ryan's going to open it up for questions, comments, uh, ask you some questions back and forth. Anytime during the talk, uh, if you go down towards the bottom of your screen, you'll see uh, several buttons down there, and one of them is chat. You can click on that, and you can type a message in there, and everyone will get that question. So at any time through that, if something pops in your head and you want to uh, throw that out there, by all means, use that. So. Um, and just uh, be patient with our technical difficulties we might have here when <laughs> it's first time doing a Zoom one like this. But um, the other thing I want to show you, what I'll jump into, if Brian can help me here with, um, I want to show you how, where all this data is kept and everything. Can everyone see the county homepage or Brian, can you guys see it? Let's see. Um, oh, I got it. How did I do that before? <laughs> Let me see. I got to hit my share screen, I think. For, yeah. Okay, here we go. Now where the heck is it? Scroll down. There you go. There it comes. How about that? Yep. Yep. Okay. So all this information on all the lakes and everything, including yours, once it gets going, will be on our web page. And I'm just going to show you quick on how to find it because it's not necessarily the easiest to get through. So this is the county's home web page. You go up to the top here to departments, click on that. You're going to scroll down to the bottom left here, look for land conservation. And once you get here, it's already this blue tab set up, the County Waterways Aquatic Invasive Species tab. You click on that, it brings you to this page. A lot of good information on this page. You can look at our cost share programs if you want. Um, the Countywide Lake Study is the one. So once you get into here, this is where everything will be kept. We got our Countywide, uh, let's see, I'll start with the first one, I guess. It's our strategy, operational strategy and plan. You want to read that countywide lake survey results. Down below here, as you can see, is a list of lakes. Um, you can see right here is Pickerel, Pickerel Lake, 
Smoke Lake is down here, right here. See, we ask everyone, whether they live on the lake or not, just anyone that uses it, to go and take that survey. Husband and wife can each take it separately. It's just uh, gathering information. It doesn't take very long. Everything's right online. You can do that. Um, then up, up here, once you get uh, individual lake summary reports and plans, obviously you don't have anything in there yet because we're not to that stage. But as you can see, uh, all the lakes are listed on here. Uh, boot Lake summary. Then eventually, oh, and here's their Boot Lake final manage, lake management plan. So it'll be a spot that throughout this whole process, once we get a draft, even the drafts go on here, and you'll you can go and reference it at any time. That so, um, and back here, Oconnell County Lakes project update. I'm going to let Dale Moore from UW Extension explain that because he's the one who takes care of that, and he can explain it. Well, good evening. Uh, Ken said uh, uh, that I've been working on this a little bit. Uh, if you were to just open it up, uh, you'll see that uh, it's a document that's uh, about five, six pages long. And uh, in the upper right corner here, you'll see a date that says March 2020. That's the last time that the uh, document was updated. And this summer, uh, a lot of work was uh, done on the pickle chain as well as surprise. Um, and we'll, we'll have to update it. But this is a document that we thought early on, um, who would have thought that COVID would make so many things uh, virtual now? But uh, we thought if we could actually reach out and uh, electronically have something for folks to uh, understand what this process is about. Um, six years ago, when we dreamt up this, uh, this process of including all 60 lakes that have uh, uh, boat access or public access, and, and to do a systematic study of all of them so that we can have uh, a, a very good understanding of what our lake resources are um, and, and what their needs would be, as well as the uh, public comments and, and concerns about them. Uh, the issue though, is that this wasn't gonna be a year process. This, uh, for each lake, it's a two year process, in fact. So we can only do about six lakes at a time and uh, we stagger them. So every year we start another six and then we finish another six. So how do you keep that um, a, a, um, in control and for everybody to uh, all be on the same sheet of paper, a page? Uh, we have this document. So if you have a neighbor that doesn't have a clue on what we're doing or what we're working on, or if there's somebody at a association that you would like to give it, this document should be able to explain the entire process. So we have an overall um, intro paragraph, then we go through the individual goals. And under goal one, not only does it say what we're going to do, we describe the activity in detail, then which lakes were actually completed. You'll see all research completed for the lakes, and then it'll start out with Bear, Lee, uh, Machikini, and so forth. The ones with the bullets next to them have tentative dates and past dates. So until that document is adopted, uh, we, we throw in dates. So um, with the uh, with pickerel um, and uh, little pickerel and smoke, uh, we had to be determined, but it definitely took place this summer. So this March, we are looking uh, to have uh, the work done in the summer, and we will have to update this, but the dates will go in there. So if a neighbor does see this, they'll understand that the, uh, the initial shoreland survey, coarse woody habitat survey, and the aquatic plant survey under goal number one was indeed completed. Uh, now, it, what's gonna happen though, is that's the raw data, the data that was uh, out in the field collected. So then over the, uh, the uh, winter, we're actually gonna be creating the maps through Stevens Point with Ryan's uh, 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 focus on, on getting those documents and maps uh, put together. So anyway, this document will go through each of the separate goals and uh, where we are on the uh, that uh, specific goal and activity. If you scroll to the bottom, as I'm doing, you have contact for Ken and myself. Again, um, on this page, you, you have a short to the uh, website that Ken talked about. That's that HTTPS uh, goo.gl. Anyway, um, that will take you again there, and uh, we have a listing here of the documents that were completed. Uh, six years ago, 
this isn't just about one lake management plan. This is about looking at all 60 lakes and then bringing not only the resources of, let's say, a lake association or one or two volunteers on the lake, uh, but to help guide those of us at the county level and to see what we can do to help uh, have a positive impact on that water body. So as the data is collected, uh, we dreamt up an idea that as the concerns are being identified, we would talk with the uh, different departments, highway department, health and human services, parks department, uh, and so forth. We actually met with them to say, what could you do or what could, uh, what could we provide you that make their jobs easier uh, to have a positive impact on the waterways? For instance, we met with highway and uh, in the past, highway, uh, when they repaved a road or uh, did a reconstruction of a road, they never really thought too much about the waterway uh, 50 yards, 100 yards off, off site there, okay? They were only focused on the roadbed itself. But now knowing that uh, they may have a negative impact with salt running off uh, roads because the idea was to get as much water off the road as fast as you can, uh, they've committed to uh, certain strategies when a road is within a watershed of, of a lake. So those uh, guiding principles and aspirational ideals are put into this document, the Operational Strategy and Plan for Surface Water Management. That was actually adopted by county board in, uh, in 2018. So there were like 16 goals in there, dealing with the different departments within the county to help preserve and to enhance waterways. So the many of the early lakes fed into that document. And that's for you on that website to be able to go in if you want, print it out, look at it and see what, the, uh, what those goals are uh, uh, for, the, for the county and the departments. We also have uh, on the bottom of the uh, page there, a countywide survey that was completed. And that was done in a scientific sampling of over 400 and some folks to see how valuable uh, water resources are, uh, what people, uh, how much they access the water, and uh, what they were willing to do to protect the water source. So again, you can take a look at that survey. Ken mentioned on the website that there is a survey specifically for your lake. Uh, you're free to uh, fill that out anytime over the next uh, year or two years. But if you also look at that list, there are other lakes that are ongoing with their studies. And if you have any interest in that lake, um, please fill that survey out as well. So it's, it's a online survey. We want to get as much impact or as many people to fill it out as possible uh, because a, a survey is no good if only two people fill it out. So if you have uh, an interest, uh, we would say please uh, um, go and fill out that survey. So really with that, um, I, I do want to say that it, the uh, lake management plan for you is a two-year process. So this first step is meet your scientists to let you know what's going on. We have your email, but you also will now have ours. And at any time, if you want to give us a call, um, if you want to go out and see if there's a, a part of the sampling that you want to partake in, uh, please just give us a call or Brenda Nordine from the DNR. Uh, we're always glad to, to have uh, the folks aware of what, what's going on. So we don't want to do this uh, in, a, uh, in, in, a, in a bubble. Um, and we want you guys to have uh, uh, a full knowledge and, and let your uh, neighbors know as well. Um, so that when the second year comes about and the plan is ready to be unveiled and we want you to give us feedback on, on the, the finished product, it's not a surprise to anybody. Hey, Ken, this is Mary. Just a quick, Al Rasson from our association is trying to join the meeting, but he's saying he's getting invalid when he's clicking on the link. And I tried forwarding your invitation to him, but it's not letting me forward. Okay, who was it, Al? Al, yeah. Could you resend that to him? I'll do it right now. Okay. And there's, there's not a limit on the number of people who can join, right? No, there's no limit. And yeah, I, don't I don't see anyone in the waiting room right now, so. Okay, yeah, I don't know why he's getting invalid. But. Unless he didn't enter the uh, password. Okay, so with that, uh, uh, we're going to go look for Al, um, but, and then we'll take questions after that. Otherwise, I'll turn it over to Ryan then to talk more about the process. Sure. Um, um, 
Yeah, I think I think Dale really said it all. Uh, again, you guys are you guys are somewhat familiar with this process. So um, data collection started this summer. Uh, we'll continue through uh, through next summer, um, including over the winter. We'll be doing some winter uh, monitoring and sampling, uh, which will be a which you guys might already do actually, uh, given the history of this lake um, and. Um, and uh, some things like that. And so after the two years, um, we will generate a summary report that uh, summarizes all, um, all the data that we collected. Um, and in your case, uh, we'll also be able to um, have, have some uh, previous data to really start to compare that things to. So it'll be really interesting to see how the plant community may or may not have changed over these few years or, or, um, or you know, where you're, I guess you guys are pretty in tune with your water quality. Um, I, Jim, you're the sampler, I believe. Is that right? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, I, I see your name on those on those samples quite regularly. So, um, um, and so then we're just going to update it. And so we will once the once that report has come out and published, um, we will then set up um, a meeting um, with with anyone interested, and presumably um, you know the um, you folks and. Um, um, kind of just go over what we've learned and, and, and make any updates or changes that we want to to that to that plan. Um, are you guys still working with Ontario right now? No. Least, okay. No, we are not. Okay. All right. Um, and so I, uh, I want to hear from you guys mainly. I just had a couple of quick questions after reading your uh, the the your current management plan. Um, do you have aerators on all three lakes now? Yes. Okay. And do you have buoys out now? Do you place buoys no. out for no? No, we don't. We don't use buoys at all. Okay. And loose drive. And um, okay, I guess that's all I had really. Um, so um, I guess uh, one of the reasons we're doing this off, obviously is to just make you aware of the project, um, introduce ourselves. Um, uh, I, I work with, I'm sorry, I didn't really introduce myself. I'm Ryan Haney. I work with UW Stevens Point uh, Center for Watershed Science and uh, we're, we're working in collaboration with DNR and the county uh, to do this project. And so um, the, uh, the, the field work, the sampling, the monitoring, that's, that's all being uh, split uh, between the different, different agencies, depending on their availability. And um, we're definitely utilizing uh, citizen science monitors wherever possible um, to, to help us get all that done, which, which you guys have, so that's fantastic. Um, and, um, and then uh, my shop in Stevens Point, uh, we'll, we'll put together the, the summary reports of the data, and then we'll also uh, start drafting your, your plan for you. So, um, so we'll just, and, and in this case, we'll just kind of be updating your plan. Um, and so we'll, we'll meet, we'll, meet uh, we'll talk about what we want to, what chance, changes we might want to make, and, and I'll help you make updates to those plan. And, and then that'll really be, uh, um, and an iterative process at that point until you guys have something you like. And then uh, similar to probably your plan now, we'll, we'll submit it to the DNR for approval and they'll have that on file so that uh, everyone's on the same page. Um, it'll also become an appendix of the countywide uh, surface water plan that, that Dale was showing you. Um, and so this is, we're about, uh, we're about what, six years into this project now, five years, something like that. And um, so we're about, I don't know, 30 lakes in maybe. Um, and, um, and so I guess we're about halfway through. So it's been really fun getting to know, know the county and, and know these different lakes. Um, and uh, we're really just seeing uh, that the effect of this is just uh, really creating a momentum, I think, and really a, a, a uh, kind of a, um, a real capacity, if you will, of the lake community. Um, you know, we're, we're getting a lot of, you, you know, you, you're a lake with an association, you're pretty sophisticated, you've got things going on. Um, many of the lakes in the county have nothing like that. Uh, they've never had samples taken on their lake or, or anything. And so um, hopefully uh, the cumulative effect of this countywide process will really be bringing uh, the, you know, a, creating a really active lake community. And, um, and then again, hopefully those lakes start communicating and, and really having, a, having an impact uh, countywide. 
Um, so I guess with that, um, I just want to open it up to any questions, um, discussion. Um, obviously, intention here isn't to have a have a uh, you know an association meeting per se, but uh, it's really just to kind of fill me in. I like I said, I read um, I read your. Uh, current management plan. And so I'm just kind of curious what kind of ongoing issues you guys may have. Um, just getting a feel for things before we go into this. Well, and it, we've already started, but so while we're in there in this two-year study and when we're out on these lakes, if you have uh, any things in particular that you guys are, 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 are dealing with or curious about or, or working on that, that we can, you know, help uh, this project can help pay special attention to um, rather than just turning out some boilerplate document, you know, something that'll actually be useful to you guys. Um, so, hey, Ryan. Yeah. Could, could you uh, share the uh, aerial photo, please? Yes, yes. Thank you. And then maybe, uh, I think Brenda's on, if she wants to maybe tell the people what has been done this summer already on the lake. That's right. That'd be great. Hey, this is Brenda. Um, yeah, I saw a couple of the volunteers on who helped me, so thank you a lot for doing that. So this year we um, did the aquatic plant surveys. I think that took about four days to complete. Um, we put the lake on the grid, and I think we ended up, I don't know, visiting 700 points maybe. Um, then Jim did the water quality, and we also did woody habitat surveys where we looked for woody habitat along the shorelines and then we did a um, shoreline habitat survey where we looked at shoreline habitat um, the 35 mile or 35 foot back from the ordinary high water mark which we're considering the riparian zone we're looking at the habitat within that for the parcels um, and lastly we're still completing the bathymetry um, I think you guys have probably seen my assistant Brian out there just driving back and forth and back and forth on the lakes. He still has part of pickerel to do. He's waiting for some of the emergent plants and the submergent plants like the lily pads and some of the, the sedges to die back a little bit so he can get really close in the shore and get some, some good bathymetry in some of those areas. So we're 99% done um, with the chain. He just needs to do a little bit more bathymetry on pickerel. And that's it. And that's it. All right. Um, so those are, the, those are the big surveys, the plant survey, the shoreland survey. Um, there'll be a lot of, um, um, you know, and then the, on, the water quality obviously will be ongoing, uh, that monitoring. Um, but it sounds like a lot of your field work's done on that lake at this point already, Brenda, huh? Yep. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Um, anyone have anything they would like to say? <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not really sure where this is all going. Um, I guess the one thing is, you know, we, we have aerators in all three lakes. The big thing is we had the fish kills. We have oxygen levels that, uh, get very low in the winter. So after the latest fish kill, we put aerators in all three lakes. Um, you know, our big thing here is maintaining and, uh, and operating those, which takes fundraising and volunteers. So, uh, you know, those are two important things to our organization is, is getting volunteers and, uh, and fundraising. I, I think big thing in my, big concern I have is that, uh, you know, passing on knowledge um, you know, my concern is that, you know, we need to make sure that we have people that, that start learning what's going on here so that, you know, as we age and get older, some of us are going to stop doing this. Somebody else is going to take this over. Um, the other thing I think we got that we've looked at is the Lake Association. We haven't done anything with it yet, but the board has talked about it is um, Pickerel Lake. Uh, our oxygen levels continue to get low as the winter goes on. Uh, we found that they drop about uh, uh, one milligram per liter per week as the winter goes on. So the longer the winter goes on, the lower our oxygen levels go. You know, and one of the things we're looking at is, you know, do we need to expand? Do we need to put a second system in? 
So those are the things that we're kind of looking at that we haven't really addressed yet, but uh, that we will be looking at in the future. We've talked about, um, you know, I think that's the big thing is that, you know, we've, we've had a fish kill. We've, we've been, we've been uh, planting fish. We've been trying to get the fish population back. Uh, we want to maintain that. We don't want to lose that. So I think that's, a, I, to me, I think that's the big thing on the lake is that, you know, fish is what drove our, our organization. And I think that's really what kind of drives us. So, okay. Well, that's a good place to be in. I work with a lot of organizations where invasives drive their organizations. So, well, you know. my my big concern is that you know we've seen a lot more boat traffic on the lake this year because fish are starting to come back. Mm -hmm. And of course, we don't have evasives yet that we know of, but. I think having a fish kill in 2013 probably is what, why we don't. Um, and I'm, you know, my fear is that uh, as, as the fish population increases and improves, so does the boat traffic and so does the potential for invasives. Definitely. Which is tough when you're trying to simultaneously raise funding and interest <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. I, this is Jeff Vanderbilt. I had a question uh, about the, uh, you know, our oxygen levels go down. Do we know why? Is there, uh, is the study going to help uncover maybe the root cause of why our oxygen levels are going down? Is that a natural process in the lake or something we might be able to do about that? What do you think the cause is or will we discover that through the lake, you know, through this survey and through this process? Um, well, I don't know if Brenda has an answer. I guess I guess my my opinion from what I know so far is that yeah, this is this is a pretty natural process for a lake like this. Um, you know, lakes are are these these lakes have been around for ten thousand years. A lot of them, um, they're low spots in the landscape. And in this case, this was an even it wasn't you know this would natural the system would naturally be, be even a little bit shallower. Am I right? If it wasn't uh, if it didn't have the the dam on it. Um, and so, you know, these lakes, it's a natural process over the, over millennia for, for these lakes to fill in, not only with sediment, but with dying and decaying plants and, and animals and things like that. And so it's a very natural process for a lake to slowly return to, to a wetland and a marsh. And, um, and that's what this lake is doing. So, um, you know, I, with, with, without having really picked apart the data, I, I couldn't tell you about the, 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 the specific health of this lake right now, but my guess is, is that it's not a typically unhealthy lake. Um, it's just doing its thing. Um, it's just a little bit older lake than some of the other lakes. Um, I mean, relatively speaking. <clears throat> but yeah, you know, you've got a lot of, you got a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, uh, you, you have abundant plants, my guess is, with these shallow lakes and, um, and uh, you know, a lot of good fish, a lot of good wildlife. That stuff decays, falls to the bottom, and creates muck. And and um, you know that that stuff consumes oxygen um, in the winter. And so when when that's you know you're a lake in the north. You know they don't have that problem as much with lakes down in Georgia. But you know you're a lake in the, you're a shallow lake in the north where it freezes over. And um, yeah, for the most part, it's just a natural process. So. Um, you know, I don't think it's I don't think it's wrong to 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 fight that off. You know, to kind of pres preserve obviously what what you're doing, but it's always going to be uh, I think it's always going to be um, somewhat of an uphill struggle for you. I think there there will always kind of be the threat for for that low oxygen in this lake, um, and the aerators help. You know, to be quite honest, but. Um, it's just kind of the nature of this the shape the shallow um, you know the shallow lake. It's a, it, you know, it, it's a, it makes for some of the better fishing um, than lakes that are deeper and have, have less going on in them. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, it's just where it is in its, in its evolution for the most part. <clears throat> but uh, we obviously, we have, we have techniques to, to, to mitigate that, which you guys are already in, employing a bit. And so I think it'll be curious to see, um, uh, you know, where that goes and, and yeah, what we might be able to what we might be able to offer to that process with some ongoing information. <clears throat> That's my short answer, by the way. <laughs> yeah, and I'll just, you know, add on to what Ryan said. Um, the lakes are going through a, 
a aging process and the aerator is, is slowing it down. Um, you know, and it's, it's definitely good to have to slow that process down. Um, you know, some people ask the question, well, if we harvest out there, well, that um, reduce the amount of oxygen depletion in the winter and, you know, for that to be effective, um, you'd have to harvest all day, every day, you know, for it to even um, do a little bit of, of, have a little bit of effectiveness. So it's just the way that, that Mother Nature wanted the lake to be. But yeah, but we have ways of working with that, right? So that's what yep, we're exactly. <laughs> Any, anyone else, any, anything uh, on your minds? Have, um, um, have you made, have, have you, I'm trying to think, uh, you're obviously being pretty effective at, at the, so far at the invasives prevention. Um, and I think you guys do clean boats, clean waters. Do you do that every summer? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. We've been working at trying to get a system set up, but we haven't got there yet. Okay. Okay. Sometimes um, there you can, uh, if correct me if I'm wrong, Brenda, but I think you can oftentimes um, uh, seek out grant funding uh, to help uh, support programs like that too. If you need to, uh, you know, if it's a matter of trying to pay a high school kid during the summer or, or something to, to be out there at the dock or something like that. Um, so hopefully we can brainstorm some ideas um, through this process. <clears throat> uh, there's a staff gauge out there. Is that right? Is that monitored? No, there's not. No, there's not. Okay. Was there ever and it's gone or no? Or not to my knowledge. But it, your lake level is pretty self-regulated with the dam. It's, it's, it should be. Okay. Yep. There's been, I mean, I walk down there almost every day to the dam. This is Lori. And I mean, this year it was really high in the spring and it's at least three to six inches lower right now than it was in the spring. Um, so I don't know if that was just that because there was so much water and the dam was having a hard time keeping up with that, but it's right. definitely a lot lower now than it was earlier this year. Okay. I, I can add a little bit to that. I shot the elevation at the dam uh, a week ago. The, the plan, the dam plan, the, the Pickle Lake Dam, not the dam plan, but the Pickle Lake Dam <laughs> plan has a maximum, has a maximum uh, plank elevation. And the, the plank elevation that existing right now is within one inch of that. Okay. There's a normal pool elevation right now, and the normal pool elevation, uh, the elevation is actually a little bit higher than the normal pool right now. It's my it's my gut feeling, and I can't I can't say as I know that, but I think that the town had arbitrarily set that level high, and is back where it's supposed to be. Okay. Based on you know based on on you know the elevation that that. You know the, where the normal pool is and what the what the maximum the plank elevation at the dam is supposed to be. Okay. You're not having uh, water level issues per se. Well, I think there are issues. Yeah, I think there's erosion issues. Uh, I mean, I, I I had a county project on my shoreline uh, last year that I did. I think a lot of people on Pickle Lake along uh, Smoky Lake Lane have, are having issues. Uh, with erosion and stuff. So I think there's issues. Yeah, with with the water level overly high. Uh, you know, I, you know, my lot is not real high to start with as a lot of lake lots aren't and, uh, an overly high water level, uh, does not, you know, uh, doesn't help our, our sump pumps, uh, our septic systems or anything else. So, sure. I, I think maintaining, I think to me, maintain an elevation that is supposed to be and maintain that elevation. Don't set, don't be uh, varying it all the time. So people don't know what to expect, you know, and that's the town stand. Is that the right? town is the town is the the town is the owner of the dam. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but Jim, that, the DNR that, sets the sets the elevations. Right. I believe I I I can't vouch for all of that. No, uh, Jim, this is Ken Dada. The DNR actually sets the elevations on them. Yeah. And, and I do have a contact number if you want for the gentleman that uh, does that up here, and he he would look at it and 
Miles? Yep. Yeah, I have had a discussion with Miles. He's the one that kind of controls that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, if you want to raise I, it, I, I, I know Miles, and I've and I have I have uh, been in contact with him a few times over the years. Okay, Brian, there's a few questions down there too in the chat. Oh, okay, um, let's see here. You got to work this better thing. What are your um... One of the questions, Ryan, was yeah, uh, would higher water levels help with the oxygen levels going into winter? Um, higher water. Uh, we, we have a, uh, an answer from iPhone. Is that you, Brenda, that said, yes, it does? I think higher water levels will help? No, that's not me. Okay. I would, I would, I mean, I would think so. I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, you've got, um, you know, a greater volume of, of oxygenated water available uh, going into winter. Yeah. Um, you know, how significant that would be, I guess, would, um, I don't think it would be a, you know, if you're talking about the lake is, is, is uh, six inches higher going into the winter, I think that would certainly carry more oxygen uh, going into the winter, but, um, you know, there's other variables too with, like you say, with the length of the winter, um, things like that, that I think could, could easily offset that. So I don't think, um, I don't think, uh, you know, a slightly higher water level would nest. I mean, it, it could help, but it, it is not uh, something that would be a, a sure thing. That's for sure. I would think, <clears throat> I don't know what you think, Brenda. But. And I think obviously you got to, you know, it sounds good just to raise the water level six inches, but what are the ramifications around the lake, people's septic systems, everything else? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That might be a question for um, Chip Long, the fisheries biologist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he'd have the, all the, the data on the levels of all the lakes where he's gotten fish kills on or he's received fish kills on. Um, you know, so that might be something that, yeah. We could ask him to see if there's like a certain depth where he doesn't see the fish kills as often. Right, but that's that that depth is not going to be um, something that they can shoot for <laughs> at this. Right. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, mean if, like you say, sit, sit, you know, raising your lake six inches would be pretty significant um, to the homeowners, but that's not going to be. Uh, nearly as significant to the fish <laughs> yeah exactly i mean so if that you know depth is is like 25 feet or something then then that you know wouldn't happen on on these lakes for sure yeah right so if your lake were 25 and a half feet going into winter i just i don't think that would make a huge difference it would help but uh it's i certainly wouldn't be worth the cost to the to the property so it sounds <laughs> like aeration is probably one of the better uh things to do to think about maybe adding a second aeration system or something um, that might help out a bit more than the water level. Is that what I'm hearing you say? That would be my thought, yeah. And um, likewise, as, as Brenda suggested, um, you know, uh, even harvesting would be a, a pretty large endeavor to really make a, a significant difference there. So yeah, I think, I think you know, aerators, um, probably some of your best bet. Um, you know, I know people have done other things in terms of like, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, plowing lakes and, and things like that. So um, maybe there's some op other options to help. But plowing? <laughs> what do you mean, like taking the snow off? Yeah. Huh. huh. <clears throat> Just to try and get light uh, earlier down uh, to plants and um, and things like that. Um, <clears throat> It's, it's hard to plow your lake and run an aerator though. So. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. I, I, I mean, from, from, from what I know, yeah, I, you know, from, from my, what I know, your aerators are, are your best bet here. So I, I don't know what, what is appropriate there, additional aerators or what, um, but the morphology of your lake, yeah, it's wide and shallow. So, um, you know, an aerator in one spot is only gonna have an impact uh, over, uh, you know, so far of an area. Uh, versus if you had a, a you know a, a deeper narrower lake that aerator would 
you know, would impact a larger area. Um, so yeah, that's something we should, we should talk to Chip about. Um, maybe multiple aerators is the case. Uh, the, the, are the aerators, um, is, that a, is that a significant cost annually to run those? Oh yeah. 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 So additional aerators is, you know, adding some significant more cost. To well, it's cost maintenance. Yeah. Up, uptake, uh, you know, volunteer effort to, you know, it takes uh, fencing. It's a safety issue as well. Sure. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, we've been fortunate. We have, we have three aerator systems. We ended up with DNR grants to put two of them in, which, which really helped us out a lot. The first one we put in ourselves with, with fundraising. Okay. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, air, yeah, aerator system, I mean, you're talking $10,000 plus to put a system in. Um, and, and we're probably spending, I don't know what we're spending on a yearly basis, probably $4,000 or in that area, four or $5,000 a year, just, you know, power, uh, maintenance, and then it's all volunteer efforts. So you guys are an association, correct? Yes. Yep. Have you discussed becoming a district? Is there Not any interest yet. in that? Not yet. Not at this point. Okay. I don't. I don't know. I, as we're gonna, I don't know as we would. I don't know as we would go there unless we end up with. Uh, if we end up with some invasive weed issues and we got high cost to control invasive weeds, I could see where we may end up having to do that in the future. If we end up with high cost to try to control weeds as well. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I, I don't know what, the, what we've got going right now. I mean, uh, you know, we've got a few fundraising things that seem to work well for us. Good. Okay. Um, this is Mary. I have, I have a question, maybe really stupid, but does the amount of muck that we have in the lakes, could that be impacting at all the oxygen during the winter? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, the muck is the muck is um, going to be decomposing and consuming that oxygen um, in the winter time. So yeah, there's definitely a correlation. Um, you know, I guess that I guess I would ask where you're going with that. I mean, because removing muck is not a very feasible thing. Um, you know, is 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 the problem. Well, I, I was just wondering if it's almost like an uphill battle. We try to do these things, but then if you still have the muck and it just continues to get deeper and deeper, does that, you know, basically offset what you're trying to do? Well, yeah, kind of like we said, you know, that where this lake is in its evolution is, is you know, it's, it's, it's a shallow lake and um, it has a lot of, a lot of muck and, and it will continue to develop a lot of muck and that's going to be, that's, it's, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the future of this lake. So, you know, things like aeration and things like that, they, they're really, you know, trying to prevent, um, you know, a, a significant incident like a, like a, uh, like a fish kill, obviously. But other than that, it's really just kind of trying to slow that process down. But it is, it is an inevitable process. It's where this lake has been heading for 10,000 years and it's, it's going to go there one way or the other. Um, yeah. So a big part of that is just, yeah, having that realistic expectation. So, you know, it, at some point you just have to decide, um, you know, what are, what are those costs, are those costs worth it? Yeah. And, um, you know, it sounds like uh, right now it may very well be, but, you know, uh, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years from now, uh, maybe running those aerators isn't doing it anymore. You know, that'll just be something you have to decide. And I think, um, again, the, the, this monitoring that you've got going on, the fact that you had some really good data gathered a few years ago, um, you've been doing it ongoing, and hopefully you'll continue it after this. Um, you'll have, you'll kind of have the information, hopefully, to be making those decisions. Are we, are we getting, are we getting the same bang for our buck anymore or not? And, um, you know, at some point, you'll just have to decide there's a threshold, I guess. Yeah. But who's to say how long that'll be? I mean, it could be, you know, you could, you could, the aerators could do everything you need them to do for another generation or two. I don't know. Um. <clears throat> okay, thanks. But yeah, overall in the long run, it's gonna, it's a one-way street. <clears throat> yeah.
Anything else? Anyone have anything to say? Any questions? Um, hopefully, again, that uh, the website, the county website, is really the best uh, um, source source of anything um, in in terms of of resources or finding out what's going on or trying to get in contact with one of us. Um, you know, there, it sounds like a lot of the work was done on your lake uh, this year, but it, it will continue through uh, through next summer. And and you know. Uh, with Jim at the helm, you know, maybe, uh, <laughs> who knows for how long. So, uh, we'll be, we'll be using that, that stuff and, and, you know, your report will be out, um, you know, probably around this time, maybe Christmas, uh, next year, um, is when I would, I would expect. And so we'll be able to, uh, really start making some of those comparisons and, and then, and then have another meeting and, and see, see where we want to go with that. Um, we can, do you know what, have you had a fish survey on the lake or when was the last one? There was, there was one done this spring. Okay. But because of the COVID restrictions, it was, wasn't done until the 4th of July weekend. Okay. So, it's so not Chip, Chip's plan is to, uh, is to uh, redo it in the spring of the year when it should be done. Okay. Um, in two to three years. In two to three years. Okay. To redo it. He, he wants to get out here two to three years to do it. It was actually done later than it should be, so it's got data. We got data, but we don't have the data that he was hoping to get. Sure. Because it was just after the the, the typical time when they would do their survey. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I, this is Lori again. I have another question. So certainly, fish is really, really important. I'm I'm interested in kind of your thoughts on the impact of low oxygen levels during the winter on um, other species on the lake, the ducks, um, the birds, uh, the turtles and other things. Um, you know, how much are they dependent upon um, the level of fish we have currently in the lake and on the oxygen during the winter? Good question. Uh, Brenda, you might be best for that. <laughs> uh, let me ask our wildlife biologists about that, Lori. I'm not exactly sure how, um, you know, turtles breathe in the muck to begin with. Yeah. So let, let me ask her. Okay. Yeah, because that. all these things feed together in a big ecosystem. I mean, just, you know, I understand that the lake is going through natural kind of evolution itself. And I'm just curious kind of what we're up for in terms of changing wildlife on the lake, not just the fish, but everything else. So that'd be cool. Thanks. Yeah, that's a good question. It is a good question. I, I will say that anecdotally, uh, you know, that, that progression, that aging of the lake, uh, uh, there tends to be a, a, a significant, you know, an ongoing increase in, in wildlife and, and, and that activity there. You know, if you think about a, um, a marsh, you know, the Horicon Marsh or things like that, um, you know, that, that's, it's part of what exacerbates that process of, of, of the buildup of the muck and stuff like that. But, um, you know, like I say, I, I couldn't speak for this lake specifically, but I just think in, in general, um, uh, may, may, may be counterintuitive with, with the, you know, fish kills, but uh, in general, I, I think they generally see a, a you know, an increase in, in that activity um, with age. I, I have a question. Is there a volunteer that does the uh, dissolved oxygen readings? Is that you, Jim? Yes. Are, are you looking to do that in February? I do it all winter long. Okay. Otherwise, Ken and I, we go out and do that. But uh, if if you're going to do it, then, uh, yeah, keep it going. <laughs> we appreciate I, it. I, as soon as there's safe ice, I usually go out and I uh, I got uh, several spots on Pickerel Lake that I do. And then I go over to Little Pickerel and Smoke. So. Okay. We usually uh, do it late February. But they're doing it for the year right now. Okay. So I usually have, I usually have every, at least every other week I have, uh, I, I do all the lakes. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll went along until from, from as soon as I can get on the lakes until I can't get on them anymore. And, uh, do you go to the, uh, the deepest part of the lake as well? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Jim, do you, do you submit that data to, to any databases or? It goes or? into swims. It's all in swims. It all goes in swims. Okay, it's, wonderful. It's, it's all in swims, yep. Wonderful. Okay. Um, 
I don't have anything else. I don't know about you, Taylor Ken. I, I just have one more comment to make. Um, for people that couldn't make it in your association and stuff, we are recording this and it will be on our website eventually. So if they want to watch it, the meeting, they'll find it under them same things. We're going to have another tab in there or a line that they can click on and find the meetings. So as I, Al couldn't get into it. He got my emails, but he couldn't, he couldn't open it for some reason. But so that'd be something for him that he could watch it if he wanted or whoever. Okay. Good. Yeah. And please, um, uh, you know, well, uh, you know, I, I, you can always refer to that website, hopefully, to see where things are at or give Ken a call um, and or Brenda um, or me for that matter. But um, and um, just to just to check in, we'll try and keep you guys updated. Uh, like Dale said, we have we have some email addresses now. So um, Dale or, or Brenda tend to send out a, an email if if there's an update or, or something to be aware of. Um, are you, do you guys have a annual meeting? Maybe uh, not this every, every, uh, a Memorial day weekend, Saturday, okay. Memorial day weekend. Yeah. Always looking for speakers. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> That's a busy weekend. <laughs> yeah, I know it's not a good weekend for speakers, but, uh, but we can always present any information that might be, uh, that somebody wants to, you know, sure. I mean, you know, we can, we can present whatever, you know, I mean, it's yeah, not a problem. Yeah. Good. Okay. And, and I would just like to uh, say to everybody, uh, if you get a chance, just do a shout out to the county. Uh, this is a grant through the DNR. Uh, the match uh, goes uh, through Ken's office, Lancon and extensions office uh, in kind work. And we're able to uh, hire the expertise of uh, UW Stevens Point in conjunction with uh, the DNR. But uh, this uh, is uh, no cost uh, to the lakes. Um, and again, the uh, county share through uh, Lancon uh, and extension is in kind. So the good news is this is a great way to get uh, all this information and another management plan done um, at no cost to the uh, uh, residents around the lake. Yeah, and we appreciate that. Good. For any of you looking at the uh, Jim Lamer site, you can see that there's a rose between two thorns. Hey, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> that is his wife, Rose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rose, you better wave. I think you're talking about you, Jerry. <laughs> All right. Well, it was very nice to meet you all and um, hope to see you on the water at some point. Likewise. Thanks. Thank you. All right. And all right. fill Thanks. out those surveys. Thanks, thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Are those surveys the ones?